bring down the hammer. Fully charged for Piltover. Face the future. Strike through progress. This one's for the folks back home. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Jace today. It is a transforming type champ, meaning that every single time you use your ultimate, then you're switching between a melee and a range form. And when you do that, you also get access to three new basic abilities. So for his abilities in his range form, his Q is the Shock Blast here, uh, that is his main poking ability. Um, this is the ability that he is known for. Um, it doesn't deal that much damage level 1, so you do not want to be spamming it, but you can still use it to poke the enemy champ, like it did right here, um, to get a lot of burst damage off when you combine it with your other abilities. Your W in range form gives you um, increased attack speed for the next 3 auto attacks, and it also works as an auto attack reset. So before you use that W, try to get one auto attack off and then use that W because that allows you to get 4 quick auto attacks off instead of just 3. Your E is the skate, when our allies pass through it, um, they're going to get increased bonus movement speed. And even more importantly, if you use your Q through the skate guys, it's going to get increased size, um, range, and even more importantly, the damage is also getting increased. And that EQ combo, that is what Jace is known for. Um, in the later stages of the game, it's going to absolutely demolish those squishy targets like the uh, mages, the AD carries and so on. Um, so you become more of a sniper champ in the later stages. Um, you have a lot of burst damage as well. Also the first um, attack you deal in range form, the first auto attack um, is going to shred their resistances. So. Before you stack all of your abilities, try to get that one auto tag off. And then you go into melee form, your Q um, is a leap, uh, dealing AoE damage um, to the target um, you aim at, as well as nearby targets. And your W gives you that uh, zone of AoE damage. As you can see right here, and the passive of it guys, uh, whenever you auto tag in melee form, then you get some mana back. So it's important that you make sure that you also auto attack in melee form, just so you can get um, uh, constantly keep refunding that mana. And then your E is a knockback that deals damage based on health. Um, so it's great later on as people start building more HP items, and it's especially great against bruisers and tanks. So every single time you switch between the me melee and range form, you get a temporary burst of movement speed. Um, so that's why I often do that um, when I go from base and back to lane, um, because it allows me to get back a bit faster. You can also use that E gate because that also gives you some uh, bonus movement speed. So for how you play Jace, um, it's very important that your EQ combo, um, you try to hit as many as possible because that's where a lot of your damage is at, but it can get body blocked, it's still AoE damage, so if they're staying very close to the minions, then they will get damaged, but if they're staying behind the minions, then they can often body block it easily. So try to like stay in the side of the wave, and then try to hit the opponent from uh, angles that they do not expect, and so try to hit them from the fog of war, because if you hit a couple of these um, QE combos guys, then you're gonna end up win winning the lane. As for the keystone first strike, Jace is actually the absolute best champ at abusing this keystone, um, because as you may already know, um, the gold you get is different uh, depending on if you are a melee champ or a ranged champ. Melee champs get a lot more gold because they get 100% of the gold, um, and ranged champ I believe it was 70% or something, but Jace counts as a melee champ. Um, so he's getting all of the gold, um, so you can already tell how strong that's going to be. It could be a bug because it's giving him 100% of the gold all the time, but even if they fix it guys, um, what you do is that you use that QE combo, and then you immediately switch to a melee form, and then you count as a melee champ, giving you that 100% of gold. So you want to make sure that you poke a lot with the auto attacks, um, most of the time, You'll be using your range form in the lane, um, use that to poke with a lot and also to farm with. And then your melee form is to like burst. Um, when you want to like all in for a combo, you hit them with that Q 
and then you use the E at the end. Um, that's the knockback. Use it at the end uh, when you're going to disengage. Um, so it knocks them back. So it makes it harder for them to trade back. So stay in the um, range form, but um, your melee form guys, that Q gives you really good wave clear. So if you want to push fast, um, use a quick shock blast on the minion wave and then you switch to the kind of uh, hammer form. Use that melee Q combined with a W and that is going to take out the wave. That's a very fast way that you can use your QE and you can do that by putting the gate like right in front of you. Um, that will make it so your uh, shock blast comes out insanely fast. Um, very hard to react to but at the same time it's also very hard to aim it properly because you have to use it so fast. So that is something you can use if the opponent has vision of you and they're trying to dodge your Q, then you can use that because it makes it a lot harder for them to dodge it uh, because of how fast it comes out. But if they don't have vision then it's a lot safer to use it like this, like I did right here, uh, because it's easier to aim, uh, meaning that it's also a lot easier to hit. That slow is of course also extremely helpful. Um, you do have a lot of burst damage. It is a mid game champ. Um, he can be strong in the laning phase if you're playing against melee champs. Um, that of course counts for the top lane because most of the matchups will be melee. But you're still playing for that mid game. Jace becomes really, really strong once you have Eclipse, the mythic item, and then you also need the mana immune upgraded. Once that happens, that's why you start blowing people up. That's when you'd really want to look for those QE snipes in the um, range form uh, because that is going to absolutely destroy the AD carries. So Jay's playstyle, um, you're a lane bully. So you want to play as aggressive as possible, but at the same time you also want to keep in mind that you scale into the mid game. Um, into range matchups, they can still poke you down. Um, so you want to go for those safe trades where you can get that QE off with a shock blast and then if they are in melee range that's when you can go into the uh, hammer form get a quick combo off where you Q them W and then use E at the end of the combo you'll see that first auto attack in the uh, melee form is also going to deal bonus damage um, you also get some extra tankiness while in the melee form that's very good for those uh, short range traits and also all ins. Your range form is for poke and your melee form is to all in. And if you're low HP then of course make sure that you base because right now we are sitting on a 300 gold bounty and Jace is pretty easy to gank. Uh, he doesn't have that much mobility. He has that disengage in his hammer form with the C knockback but that's pretty much it. Otherwise he's pretty easy to gank. It's important that you have good vision and you don't overextend when you cannot see the enemy jungle. Um, he can be used both in the mid and top lane. Top lane is a lot easier to proc the first strike because most of the matchups are melee matchups. So get to abuse that keystone a lot more often. It is not an early game keystone, that's what you have to keep in mind. Because it gives you gold based on the damage you are dealt and in the mid game that's why you deal a lot of damage. Um, so. It will start ramping up in the mid game. That's why you can really see how much gold it's giving you. Remember to make sure that you also auto attack a lot in the melee form, especially when you farm, just so you can get that mana back. Um, because as I said earlier on, the W passive makes it so every single time you auto attack, you also get some mana refunded. You can see right now the EQ combo is dealing a decent amount of damage. But you are still able to put two more points into it. So you are able to put six points into the basic abilities, and that's because you're not able to uh, max out the ultimate. Um, so your basic abilities will become insanely strong. That, of course, also makes you incredibly powerful in the landing phase uh, because you have access to six abilities.
this is how you want to push just cue the entire minion wave in the melee form and also use that w so that aoe damage with the lightning field also comes up really try to poke the opponent as much as possible with that qe combo a cool thing you can do guys is that the w in the range form um, the part that gives you really fast um, auto attacks you can use the W and then you can immediately switch into the melee form and then it will st still count for your auto attacks. So this uh, first strike keystone is really really good on those um, champs that can get to auto attack, hit the opponent first and then also have a lot of burst damage. And Jace is of course one of the absolute best champs because he has a range form, uh, so in melee matchups, he should always be the one to be able to hit them first. Even against range matchups, he still has his QE combo. Um, so you can like, engage from long range and then you can run in. Um, it doesn't only give you the gold, also the first strike also gives you that increased damage, so it's not useless in the later stages because it still has that damage uh, buff. So right now they have Warwick with their passive activated because we're low HP. So we're not going for that tower play, so we just have to back off right behind the tower just to be safe. We have the Eclipse, that's a big big power spike, but we also want the Mana Moon and we want it transformed. Because when it transforms, that's why the big power spike comes in. And another big power spike comes in when you get that armor pin item because um, in a lot of games, people are going to stack armor against you because of how much burst damage you have. So most games, you also need that armor pin item, and that's why you come online. So he has that crown mythic item that of course is going to be annoying because it's going to block out your QE combo. Um, so before using it, try to like get one order tag off on the enemy champ so you can like take out the mythic shield. And I can poke them like this. If you saw how I used my Q, I used it between the minions. Um, that's a gap between the melee and a range minion, so I tried to use it between that. Um, so it's like sneaky ways that you can get a lot of shock blasts off. So we still don't have enough gold. We need a bit more gold so we can get the uh, mana immune, and then we also need it to transform. That's why it becomes really fun when that happens. Just have to watch your QE combo, it is going to absolutely shred those squishy carries. So be careful in the lane though, you will get camped a lot, especially if you're playing him in the mid lane. Um, the build and such is the same for mid and top lane, but in the mid lane, because there are so many different routes they can use to gank you, and because you're also somewhat immobile, you're very easy to gank. So it's important that you have proper vision and you never overextend when you cannot see the enemy jungler. The so QE combo can also be used for wave clear. Um, it is going to one shot the backline minions. And then you have the melee Q uh, for the melee minions. Sometimes people will escape um, where your QE combo leaves them at like 1 HP, that is, is of course unfortunate, but that's why I like to play with Ignite, so we can make sure that does not happen. Um, but you can also play him with Teleport, it's a lot safer, it's also better in the late game because it allows you to split push. That W attack speed, very important that you also abuse that when you push for towers. Because of course it does allow you to take down those objectives a lot faster as well. The mid game has pretty much started. Um, you want to go to the sideline if you can because that's why you get the most amount of gold and XP for yourself. Also when the fights start around the dragons and rift and such, you become a sniper. Um, so 
wait in the sidelines and wait for the squishy carries to walk up and then you try to hit them with as many cues as possible. Because a single Q is going to take out like half HP if not more and if that happens they will already be at a disadvantage uh, for when the fight really begins. So like before a fight starts you always want to make sure that you're poking them down. You have to wait in the fog of war, never show yourself because otherwise people will expect that combo. Just wait for them to walk up and when you see them, pop them with that QE combo, put them to low HP and that should result in a free objective. So this champ becomes really really strong when you have to fight around objectives but also when you siege for towers uh, because often the enemy champs will be grouped up allowing you to hit multiple people with that combo. We are getting camped a lot and that is what's going to happen when you play Jace. Um, he's also very very hard to play guys. Um, it's a very difficult champ of course he does have 6 basic abilities that you have to know exactly how to use. It is also a champ that becomes extremely useless if he falls behind. So if you like int the laning phase guys then this champ becomes extremely useless later on. So when you play Jace it's absolutely crucial that you either stay even or you snowball the lane. Otherwise you are going to get outscaled by these mages that you meet in the mid lane. Uh, they are going to outscale you so hard, especially in those team fights. So really try your best at not griefing the lane. It's going to take a lot of games because it's a very difficult champ to play and master as well. But if you enjoy him, then I would say definitely go for it. Um, he's very fun to play. Very fun to play in team fights as well, um, if you get to hit multiple people with that QE combo. You can see that damage is absolutely insane. Um, we still have not transformed that mana immune yet. When that happens, it's going to get even better. And then we need the armor pain item, the Cerilda Scratch. And that's where the fun really begins. So as you can see, people are starting to stack armor items. They're going to do this most of the games um, if they know um, what to do of course, um, because Jace has a lot of burst damage and when you play Jace, then you have like two AD carries in the team because you're AD carrying the bot lane and Jace is also kind of an AD carry. So it's normal that people build armor. So it's important that as the third item, you try to get this armor pin item. So we have the Yumi with us, making us deal even more damage. So gonna wait in the sidelines, try to snipe people with that QE combo. Um, it also gives you vision, so you can see if you hit people. It can also be used for vision, but it's kind of a waste because then it will be on cooldown and you will not be able to chunk out someone. Unfortunately, that Q barely missed, um, so the mid laner survived. But you can see, even against someone, something like a Renekton, and we are absolutely shredding that guy. Gosh, you're able to snipe people from long range um, if you know how to aim the Q well. So it's very hard escaping uh, from you, especially when they don't have vision, because they do not know when that Q is coming in. So try to stay grouped with your team when you siege for objectives and such. You can also split push in the sidelines but he's very strong when you go for the sieges uh, because it allows him to stay in the sidelines uh, side and go for those QE snipes. You hit somebody and they will be forced to base. I'm gonna let my team do the drake because they don't need me. I can use that extra time to take away the jungle camps as well um, so you kind of extend that lead even more. Um, it's a waste of time if I also went uh, bottom lane towards the dragon um, because they do not need my help. Instead we are taking away the jungle camps from the Warwick so we are also setting him even further behind. That's kind of how you also punish people. Just go back to grouping 
Always before engaging fights, always try to poke them down. That's absolutely crucial. Um, you're very easy to kite once you're in the melee form. Um, that mostly gives you a lot of burst damage. You don't have a lot of consistent damage. Um, you're mainly focused around dealing that uh, burst damage, so always try to poke them down, and then once they're low HP, that's when you can all in them. So we're sitting on a lot of gold now. Of course, we also have that Money Moon transformed, and now we can also get the Armor Pin Atom. So that's the big, big power spike part. We're getting a ton of gold as well from that first strike. Um, every single time we land that QE combo, guys, and also when we burst them down. If we can go for a full engage, that's going to give us insane amount of gold. Also, try to take away the jungle camps if you can. Uh, Kosha Q is AoE damage, so you're going to take them out really fast as well. And now that there are no objectives up, you want to play around the Baron. You want to make sure that you have proper vision. Um, since the dragon is down and Baron is the only objective up, you want to secure vision around it. If you can get a pick on somebody, that's when you can try to force it. It's also really nice that this armor pen item has that slow on the passive, so every single time you hit your abilities, then they also will be slowed, making it even harder for people to escape. You also have to make sure that you kite properly, like we're doing right here, because if you do get hit by one CC ability, then you will get CC chain and you will get bursted down, uh, because you're still very squishy. You have a lot of damage, but you're still very squishy. That's like pretty much how you want to play Jace in the mid game. Just focus on hitting those shock blast as much as possible, even better if you can hit multiple people. If you do that guys, when you play around objectives, that's how you slowly whittle down the enemy team. That's also how you secure those objectives. You can of course keep building with all the atoms, you don't build boost on this champ. It's a champ that's going to be squishy no matter what. But you can build defensive items like the Guardian Angel if you need it. Um, if you're playing against a lot of AD Assassins for example, then it can be good. But it's a carry, meaning that you don't build tank items. Serpent's Fang is also an option. Um, you can also get the maximum amount of shield reduction because you can count as a melee champ. So Serpent's Fang is really really good if you see them have multiple shields on their team. Make sure that you really kite them. As I said earlier, you have a lot of damage but you're also very squishy. So even if you're super fed, people will still be able to one-shot you, so it's important that you kite them properly. Just look at this damage, that's absolutely ridiculous. This is what you're able to do with Jace in the mid game. Even if you're not as fed as I am, as long as you have a couple kills or you at least secured your lead in the laning phase, um, DS wise, then you're still able to do stuff like this. And this is what Jace does in the mid game. He has so much power around those objectives, that's also why he has so much priority in those competitive games. The first strike gold income is amping up at this stage. If we can land a full combo on someone, um, you'll be able to see how much gold we are getting. So we have the Yumus Ghostblade here. Um, of course, that's also a very good item. That's like one of the best lethality items in the game. Um, it gives you so much movement speed and also, also uh, a lot of damage. Helps you kite people and also helps you chase them down. And then the next item really depends. You can get anti-healing if they have a lot of healing. You can get uh, Serpent's Fang if they have a lot of shielding. And you can also just get more lethality. Um, Edge of Night is also a very fine item. If there's something like a Vagar or someone with like super dangerous one time CC, like Annie with her ultimate up or Blitzcrank's hooks, then Edge of Night is also very good.
And this is pretty much what happens if you get caught. Um, now that we have the Yumi on top of us, we survive for a bit longer. But if you ever get caught by CC, then you're just going to die. It doesn't matter how fit you are. So on top of his six abilities, excluding the ultimate, positioning is also another thing that makes him really really hard to play. Um, because if you want to deal the maximum amount of damage, you have to be in melee range. Meaning that people will also be able to target you with their CC abilities, so they will end up focusing you down. So make absolutely sure that you position well, that you also have proper wards on the map so you can always see where the enemy team is at. Especially in those um, team fighting scenarios. So right now we're just going for an anti-healing item. This of course because they do have a decent amount of sustain. They have the Warwick, the AD carry also has a lot of sustain. So we want to make sure that when we hit them with a QE combo, they're not able to heal back up to full just by hitting a minion wave. So we are denying them that chance as well. Um, so that's going to give us a much, much better chance at sieging for those objectives. Um, because um, when you hit them with a QE combo, they'll be forced to base now. They'll not be able to heal back up anymore from a minion wave. So that's going to give us some extra time to seize down for objective or maybe even end the game. That W is also really good for taking down the wards, guys. Even in the early game, as long as you have one point into it, you see somebody and put down a ward, then you can just quickly pop that W out, and that is enough to take out the vision ward. You're still not a frontline champ, so stay in the backline like a carry. You can walk up whenever your Q and your E is ready, and once it's used, then you just back off. Back to safety, wait for your cooldowns, when they're back off, that's when you re-engage. Look at this damage, absolutely crazy. This is the power of the Jace pick if you know how to use him. This is a champ that you have to create a lead with because he's a lane bully. His strongest point is in the mid game, so that's why you want to look to end the game as well. But this is how you play Jace, I hope this was helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.